Many of the requests that travel across the internet are HTTP requests. We ask for some data and then we get some data back. But there are times when only real-time data will do. And when we need real-time data, we reach for WebSockets. WebSockets are one of the web APIs that Dino provides in the Web Standard API. Let's take a look at how we might use this to build a little socket application. We'll do so in this server.ts file and we're going to use dino.serve. It's going to take in a handler function as its argument here. The first thing we'll do here on line two is we're going to check the headers and specifically for this value called upgrade. So it looks to see if this is equal to WebSocket, which indicates that the client is trying to establish a WebSocket connection. So if this is empty, then we're going to return a new response where the status is going to be 501. And that means that it's not implemented, signaling to us that it only supports WebSocket connections. Then we're going to destructure socket and response from calling dino.upgrade web socket with that request value. So if the request includes the upgrade WebSocket header, the server is going to upgrade the HTTP connection to a WebSocket connection. Then we're going to call listener. We're going to listen for the open event, which is going to fire when the client connects. So here we'll just add a little callback function here to say console log, a client just connected. And then outside of the event listener, but still inside of the dino.serve, we'll say return response. So we're creating a server that only accepts these WebSocket connections. Now we need to create the client. So let's go ahead and create a client application here. We're going to create an index.html. We'll flesh out some of the default things that we need. So we'll add a doc type, HTML. We'll add an HTML tag. We're going to add a head tag. We'll call it a server. Then inside of the body here, we're going to say h1 web socket client. And then here we'll add a button and the button will have an ID of connect inside of those double quotes. And then the button will read connect to web socket. And then we'll say p ID equals status and the initial status here will be not connected. Now let's write a little bit of a script here in a script tag directly in our HTML. We're going to create a value called socket. We'll reset it in a minute. So we'll use let then we'll say document dot get element by ID connect and then we'll chain on add event listener. We're going to listen for the click event and then we'll set the socket to a new WebSocket connection at the WS colon slash slash local host 8000 route. Then we'll say socket dot add event listener. This is going to when we listen for that open event, we're going to change the text of the P here document dot get element by id status dot text content and that'll be set equal to connected to web socket server all right so once we've done that let's go ahead and run dino server dot ts we'll say yes to all those things so we'll go ahead and run that. We'll open up our index.html file. Now, if we click connect to WebSocket, this is going to connect to that WebSocket server. So we'll go back to our terminal and we'll see a client just connected. Awesome. So let's fix our spelling mistake and we'll also start to handle a couple other events with our server. So Within our dino.serve function, let's go ahead and add another event listener, this time for a message. So here we'll say if event.data is equal to hey, more on that in a moment, we'll say socket.send yo. Now we need to handle this on the client side. So we'll add another button here. We'll say ID equals 
send hey. And by default, we want this button to be disabled when we first visit that site. And then let's also add another paragraph with an ID of messages. And we'll keep that empty for now and make some changes to that with our JavaScript here at the bottom. With our event listener, we're listening for that open event. We will say that we're connected to our web server here. Then we'll use document.get element by ID. So when we connect, we want that button send hey dot disabled to be false. So we're not going to be able to click it until we're connected to the WebSocket. Then we're going to add another event listener here. We'll say socket dot add event listener message. And then we'll take in the event here. We're going to call document.get element by ID messages. And this is going to set that message text with dot text content. And then using a template string, we'll say message from server event dot data. So let's add one more thing here. We'll say document.get element by ID send hey add event listener. This time we're listening for that click event and we're going to call socket.send. Hey. Okay, let's check this out. Let's see where we're at. We'll stop and restart our server down there. We'll go over here to the browser. We'll say connect. It'll say connected. We'll click send hey and then we'll get this message from our server. So that's working well. And you could also add a value for closing that connection for the server. We're going to add this here, socket.add event listener, close console.log disconnected. We need to handle this on the client as well. So we'll go ahead and create this. We'll add that here, socket.add event listener close. And then this time we'll say document dot get element by ID status. So we'll change that text to read connection closed. And we'll also say document dot get element by ID send hey. So we'll disable that button. Let's close that, reopen it. We're going to make sure that our client is refreshed. We'll connect. We'll send, hey, there's our message. So now if we go back to our terminal, we'll see that this is disconnected. We're getting the console log message. When you're ready to deploy this, there are a lot of different options. You can deploy with zero config to Dino deploy, or you can choose any number of deployment options using and deploying the Dino Docker image to your favorite provider like GCP, AWS, or Fly. We've built a small socket application, but web sockets can be used for all types of applications that require real time data. Games, data feeds, apps that require notifications are all great uses for a web socket. And because Dino is small and performance tuned by design, building an app with Dino can make for a really snappy web application.